and welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Cat's Bit Productions. Thanks a lot for clicking on my video today. I really appreciate your time and attention very much. And if you like my videos, you like the tutorial information, the tips and the advice, please make sure to sign up for YouTube today and then subscribe to my YouTube channel because it's a free way for you to support the YouTube channel and help me grow right here on YouTube and keep all of the free screen printing videos coming to you on YouTube.com. So make sure to sign up for YouTube, create an account, and then go to my channel page, my profile page, and click the subscribe button. And that helps me out a lot and I truly appreciate it. Okay, today I just wanted to go over a little bit of setup stuff, okay? If you follow me on Instagram, Catspit Screen Print Supply on Instagram, okay, you are familiar with this new Southwestern Catspit design that I've been working on and trying to get to printing the shirt. So today we're gonna set up and do the test prints. All right, so many of you know that I use masking tape a lot. I like masking tape. I don't know, I just do. It doesn't pose any problems for me, okay? And I tab it on both sides, or, well, at least one side, <laughs> okay? And that just makes it easier to remove if I have to. But to tell you the truth, honestly, this screen will probably stay up, so I don't really need to tab it. Now, I like to tape off on the substrate side because uh, it uses less tape and it keeps the tape out of the way of my ink and squeegee. And I do not mind any of the ink staining that occurs here. It's really irrelevant because it's never going to be anywhere where my image is. So any of the ink that stains because of the tape really is not a big deal. It's inconsequential because I'll never have a stencil over that far. Remember, I did a video about the sweet spot, right? because you watch all my videos, right? So check out the video about the sweet spot and you'll see why I never get close to the frame edges. And of course, please don't forget that I sell screen printing equipment and supplies at catspitscreenprintsupply.com and I have a Phoenix area storefront. You can check my website for the location and hours of operation and also don't forget that I offer free shipping anywhere in the continental United States on all of the major Ranar equipment purchases. And Catspit Productions offers a lifetime guarantee on all of the Ranar presses, the screen printing presses. And that's only available from Catspit Productions. So check out my offerings at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. Okay, so I have also done videos about how to tape off stuff, and I showed you tips and stuff. So uh, you should remember, if you've, if you've seen that video, what I'm going to do now and which side I'm going to tape off on and why, right? I'm going to tape off on this side. This is, we're going to do the left chest. So the left chest is going to end up somewhere over here on my palette. And I don't need these to print, but I'd like to keep them free of ink so that when I want to print them, I'll be able to line them up to the palette and see through. So I tape off on the inkwell side for this. And I use glossy newsprint, basically. This is a Uline catalog or whatever. I don't actually, oh, it's a B&H catalog, but Uline catalogs, anything with glossy paper is, is fine. Okay, and I can just do like this, very simple. The part that you want to make sure you have right is that you need to make sure these pieces of paper are secure enough that if you put the squeegee down with ink and stuff like that, it's not going to pull the tape off or the paper up and make a big disaster. So again, I'm going to tab the tape and then put this together like a little jigsaw puzzle.
down here I'm going to put a little bit of tape on top of here because my squeegee is going to go there and if I do that it'll just stay nice and, and uh, better. Okay, so that, that's that one and I can basically, you know, we can probably get it set up in here, you know, generally speaking. For this screen, I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to tape it off on this side, but I'm also going to tape it off on the other side for security because the images are so close together and I'm going to be running my squeegee up right here. So I'm going to tape it off on this side really well, and then on the back side, I'm also going to put a piece of paper with a tape just in case the ink wants to seep through in any way. Here, you'll notice I'm going to drop it behind the design and actually lay the tape over the design. Because my stencil is created properly and I know it's very good, I don't have any problems with, uh, you know, the tape pulling up my emulsion or anything. And I apologize, this screen keeps coming back and trying to get in front of the camera. <laughs> Freaking screen. Okay. Again, I'll put a little tape down here. Okay, and that's, that's all I'm going to do on this side. Oops, I'm sorry, I just whacked the mic. Alright, and on this side I'm going to do basically the same thing. You know, just to be sure that I don't have any seepage or anything. You know, if I'm just printing and not really paying attention. <laughs> Okay, this piece of tape being so close to this here, if you have to wipe the back of the screen to improve resolution or anything, like if you blur it out a little bit and you wipe the back, this can possibly absorb some ink and then start printing a tape line on your lighter colored garments. So you may have to change this if that becomes a problem. Today I'm printing uh, black or dark. So it probably wouldn't show up. I mean, it could actually. It's a light gray ink, so possibly. Okay, so now, you know, honestly, to tell you the truth, I may make another screen of this and make this bigger. Because after I did this screen, I was kind of like, you know what? This design is so tightly compacted and put together that it, it would probably look even better if I brought it out another inch on each side. So I still might do that, but let's let's do a test print today and see how my ink and how my little distress pattern is going to work for us. Okay, so let's try to get this print head here, and I apologize if I'm too close to the mic. I'm trying to wing a lot of different things here for you today. Okay, so all I did was line up the text with the crosshairs and the center, you know what I'm saying, and get it in a kind of a center position. Now, as I clamp it in, I can see that again, my, you know, my screen angle is a little bit tweaked, I think, so let's take a look. Okay, so now that we're ready to do a test print, the first thing we need is a little spray tack. Not good to spray when your camera is open and running. <laughs> but, um, you, and again, I have a video about spray tack, which ones to use for what garments, and how to keep the spray tack on the palette. So again, don't forget to check out my over 400 screen printing videos right here on youtube.com and please make sure to subscribe okay so let it tack up 
very important. I do the old shirt fanning because it's like an adhesive and you know it doesn't like dry but it does dry you have to let it dry and tack up if you you know put a shirt on here too quickly f after freshly spraying the web tack or the mist tack or what have you it will come up on the inside of the shirt now um, you know if it's a small amount it's likely to come out when the customer washes it but if it's a huge sticky patch uh, you know, it might take a couple of washes or it may not come out. I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, but uh, it, uh, you know, spray tack and stuff should wash out. If you have a little bit of stickiness on the inside, it should wash out. Okay. So what is the purpose of a test print anyway? And, you know, it's not only just to test and see that your design is right, but you know, you wouldn't want to start printing your product with the screen dry like this because we need to get the ink in the mesh and get it to flow before we start printing. So the test print not only tests out your screen, your stencil, your artwork, it makes sure everything is good, it's kosher, it's A-OK, -okay, good to go, but it also will prepare the ink, you know, prepare the mesh, it gets it soaked with ink. Okay, and it's a little cold in my shop today. And this ink, <laughs> it had some, it's a gray ink I mixed. So it's a little bit like there's some black streaks still in there. But uh, it's, it's a little stiff because it's cold. And I didn't add any reducer because, you know, I don't really need it. We'll see. We wing it, you know. All right, so that's the first print and you can actually see you know I mean I don't know if you can on camera but I can see that there's still ink in the mesh and that the print is going to be very light see and that's that's part of getting the ink to flow is is doing the test print and of course as you work the ink it should get creamier the plastisol ink Okay, see, so now we're getting the ink to flow. And getting the print the way it should be, perhaps. <laughs> it's more about what we want in this one, honestly. That's not bad. So I gotta, I gotta decide, you know, when I'm printing, how much ink do I wanna leave on there? I may just do it like that. that that's like enough, but not too much. All right, so let's test print the crest and see how that's gonna look. Gotta get the ink to flow. Okay, not bad. I gotta see, you know, how much I like this crest print. <laughs> I think I got to adjust the off contact a little bit for this one, but yeah, pretty cool. So, all right, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm actually going to test print an actual shirt for myself, and then I'm going to show you that. Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, then you saw these shirts, which I chose for this run, these next level shirts, and this is a size medium. That's kind of like what I wear, so... We're gonna print this one first and see how it looks. So let me adjust the height. Okay, so the crest print. Remember we did the video about crest print placement. So as I'm setting this up, I can actually see my artwork and you know the collar line and stuff like that and take a look at it, okay? and get an idea of where I want to put this crest print. Okay, so this is a test. I think I have it about four fingers down, and so let, let's just see. Okay, I gotta print a little bit more ink, and I have something here. I, I don't think, pinhole, I'm not sure. This is 
Also why you do a test print, if you see any anomalies, you gotta check that out. So that's probably the crust, not bad. Um, I think there was just a couple little, uh, when I wiped the screen, I must have got a little ink. Okay, here, I have to mention this, okay, because um, I thought there was some ink on here. And this is really funny, man, because it wasn't ink at all. Um, it was a freaking tear in the shirt. So I had two holes in a shirt. I didn't realize that. I printed it. The, the distributor won't take it back after it's printed, okay? But that was a damaged shirt from the wholesaler. And, you know, it sucks because I didn't see the holes until after I printed it. So that's a rag. And, you know, that's one of those things you gotta be careful of because the, the shirt wholesalers, you know, even if it's their fault that the shirt's damaged, they won't take it back after you print it. Okay, so I got a fresh shirt here, a new shirt, and fortunately I ordered extras because this size was for me. <laughs> so, uh, no big deal. So we got a fresh shirt here. Let's do the back print. I'm gonna preload it, flood it a little bit. And now that I just set the thing down, I just realized I forgot to check the height. <laughs> so, so we're not having a, we're not doing the test prints too good here today. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I think it's a little high, but it might be okay. Yeah, it's a, you know, size medium. It's, it's a little high, but it's okay. Pro nobody will notice that except me. I'll drop it down a little bit when I load the next shirt. You know, I'll, I'll let a little bit more slack off maybe, just a little bit. But that's not bad, that's okay. So that's pretty cool, I, I like it. Um, I have to decide how many passes I wanna do. I think the crest only needs like two or three hits. The back might need, just because of the big open spaces, might need just a little extra stroke. And um, it still, you know, looks good, has that vintage look. And, you know, I'm not printing a whole lot of ink. This is a uh, 160 mesh, and it's a gray, light gray. And when you wash this, you know, it's gonna feel pretty soft. It's not gonna be a heavy print at all. Okay, so here's the left chest or crest print, close up. And uh, I think it came out very well, and I'm very pleased with the light gray that I mixed for the shirt. This is the full back print, and what we want to do now is we're going to leave this shirt out for a couple days because it is like, it's a 60% cotton, but it does have some polyester in there. So what we want to see is how much, if any, dye migration will occur, and does that add to the print? So that's the reason why I didn't reduce this ink at all, is because um, I knew I was printing on a higher mesh count, a 160 mesh count, so I was printing a lower volume of ink, and I knew that we were printing on this poly cotton blend, so I figured, you know, some of the, some of the poly, even though it's a 60, 40, or something like that, it may even be less, it, it, it's mostly cotton. Um, I'll look at the tag before we do the close-up. <laughs> and, um, you know, but if it actually bleeds a little bit or migrates a little bit, that'll add to the vintage look, you know? And so I'm, I'm almost hoping that it does a little bit, honestly, to tell you the truth. Uh, but if it doesn't, that's okay too, because it's a pretty thin layer of ink and I think it's, it's working and it looks good. So let me give you a little close up. Okay, so yes, it's a 60% cotton, 40% polyester. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure and so yeah, so there could be a little bit of dye migration that could occur. And like I said, if it does, it's actually a good thing for this shirt because we wanted it to have that kind of vintage washed look. And uh, if it doesn't, I think it still looks pretty cool. So either way, we'll test it out. I'm gonna leave this shirt for a couple days before I do the actual production run. And I will make a video of that for you guys. But um, we're gonna leave it a couple days just to see what might happen. If anything dramatic happens, I'll do a follow-up video, but I doubt it. I think it's gonna be pretty much like this. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm liking this shirt. I like the crest after all, and the position is nice. I think I like the position. 
Okay, and back print. All right, so I'm actually digging this one a lot. I like the colors. It's really cool. Um, I will be giving a few of these away for free, probably through Instagram, and then they will be available for purchase eventually, maybe, if I decide to put them on the e-commerce store. Um, but they will be available in the Phoenix area storefront as freebies. So when you come in to purchase supplies in the Phoenix storefront, don't forget to ask me if I have finished printing these and get your free Cat's Bit shirt. All right. Thanks a lot for watching today. I really appreciate your time and attention very much. Thanks for clicking on my video. Please make sure to rate, thumbs up, comment below if you can, and most importantly, subscribe. We'll see you next time.